Yep. Hello, everybody. Oh, are we started? Yeah, we started. It's been that kind of day. It's that kind of day. All right, let's do that. that. Season. Let's do this. Move this over here. Hi. Hello, <laughs> Disney friends. <laughs> Welcome to the one try that. All right, one more try. There we go. Hello, Disney friends. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Disney Parks podcast. Excuse me, Disney Park. I do that every time. Yeah, almost. Welcome to Disney WW Park Hoppers. Whatever. I'm on the wrong podcast. All right. It's kind of that kind of day. Uh, welcome to WDW Park Hoppers Live. My name is Park Hopper John. I'm Park Hopper Sid. And it's been a long day. Uh, we're so glad that you were here. If you would like to find out a little bit more about us, you can visit us at wdwparkhoppers.com. Dot com. And you can also find us over on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitter. I know it's hot in here. I know. I'm sorry. Sweating. I'd be sweating like I'm walking down Main Street USA in June. Uh you can find out more or about October, us at yeah. you know? I mean, uh, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at WDW Park Hoppers. So forgive us for missing last week. Uh, we, we we honestly we took a mental health. Actually, thing. no, we didn't miss last week. Oh, we yeah, we tried to. And Our then internet just crapped kind out. of pooped out. Yeah. So sorry for those of you that heard us. Well, <laughs> knock on wood for this week. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, it'll be better than last week. Uh, so we got a couple of guys watching Hairball. there. All right. So uh, anyway, we got a couple little housekeeping things we'd like to uh, let you know about. All if right. you're going to be in town this weekend uh, on the 28th, which is Saturday, mm -hmm. at 2 p.m., we're going to be over at the Four Seasons. We're going to be at the Lickety Split, which is their uh, coffee slash uh, grab and go slash uh, gelato mm -hmm. uh, restaurant. We're probably going to be out back, probably just. Where they're gonna be able to fit us because it's a very fantastic patio. It's a very teensy tiny little place, but the patio is amazing. Uh, so we're gonna be there uh, starting at two o'clock. We're gonna go probably for an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, Tony uh, with uh, Disney by the Numbers and I are going to be there. It's uh, it's a Disney by the Numbers, uh, WDW Park Hoppers, and Disney Parks podcast meetup. So we're gonna have a lot of folks there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys will join us. We're going to. Uh, to be there hanging out, just chatting. I'm going to bring a bag of fun stuff to give away. Tony's going to be bringing some stuff. But we did need to let you know about the parking situation. You have a couple of options. Uh, if you're not going to, like, hire an Uber or a cab mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to drive yourself, you have really only a couple of options. The first option is to go to the Four Seasons to park. Their daily parking is $25. So... At that point, you have an option of maybe going down to PB&G, Pool Bar and Grill, and having lunch or maybe an early dinner. Maybe you want to make a reservation, go to Ravello, or you can go up to, God, I can't remember the name of the steakhouse. Up the top really? Of I mean, you could even go and just get some appetizers and a couple of cocktails. Yeah. They and, will, uh, they will yeah, validate. sign up, validate, yeah, validate your ticket, for so. You. so that's your first option. The other option is to, instead of going into the uh, the Golden Oaks entrance, you can go right into, excuse me, I'm itch. Hairball, uh, you can go right up into the uh, the plancha or the uh, Tranquilo Golf Club. It's right right past the entrance to uh, to the Four Seasons. If you're going towards the Magic Kingdom uh, on that road, you can go into the you can go into the uh, uh, plancha. Uh, excuse me, the Tranquilo Golf Country Club. You can park there, walk through the Country Club, walk out of the Country Club. You can see the Four Seasons. It's just like a five minute walk. Bibbidi boppity, you're there, and uh, we would love to do that. That's you know, the and free. And the temperature way. is going down, so it might be a nice little walk. You know, burn off the ice cream on your way back to your car. It might be great. That's right. Uh, we will say that when we say in town, we are here in the Orlando area, so we are talking about over at Walt Disney World, uh, and it's the Four Seasons that's just on the other side of Disney Springs. Yep, absolutely. So uh, we love to come see you there, and uh, that's that's going to be this Saturday. So. Are you, are you talking about this or am I talking about I'm this? I'm talking about this. Okay. All right. So there is a new pilot program at select Walt Disney World Resort hotels that are welcoming not only all of their wonderful guests, but their canine companions as well. Walt Disney World and a few of their hotels have opened up the doors for you to bring your four-legged babies. So, or three-legged, you know, you happen to have a dog named Tripod. But Go, goes so, by the name of Lucky. Starting last week, Walt Disney World Resort welcomed guests, canine companions. The new service permits up to two dogs per guest room. Now, each resort offers 
easy <coughs> access to outdoor pet exercise areas and green spaces with pet relief areas. I'm sure they're going to have a please pick up after your puppy rule, but they better. That we have not seen in writing yet, but we will see. So at check in, Pluto's welcome kit is there for you and your puppy. It includes a mat, bowls, a pet ID tag, courtesy plastic disposable bags, puppy pads, you know, to put in your room just in case there's an accident, and dog walking mats to show you all the best places. Also included is a Pluto do not disturb door hanger indicating to the hotel staff that a pet is in the room. Mm -hmm. Daycare and other pet services are offered at nearby Best Friends, which is the on-property full-service pet care facility. It's awesome. Yes. Fees do apply at Best Friends, and there is a fee for bringing your dog with you to one of the resorts. Now, there are at this time, there's only four resorts that are offering this, and there is a per-night, per-room pet cleaning rate. So, Art of Animation Resort, $50 a night. Mm -hmm. Port Orleans Riverside, $50 a night. The Yacht Club, $75 a night. And the cabins at Fort Wilderness Resort are $50 a night. Dogs staying in the Disney Resort guest rooms must be well behaved. They must be leashed. In that, that rules out ours. That totally rules out. Casey might have a chance. Maybe. Uh, leashed in resort public areas, and they must be properly vaccinated. So I'm sure you're going to have to have paperwork to prove that. Yep. For more information about the new dog friendly trial program, including other restrictions and policies, please contact 407-W-DISNEY. Now, I will tell you that we've been talking about this. We, a were, lot. we were kind of excited about it, but at the same time, I won't lie, there's times we go on vacation and we're just like, oh, we can sleep in and we don't have to worry about the dogs. We know they're being taken care of. We don't have to rush home from the parks to make sure that, you know, the puppy clock doesn't expire. Right. I, I think if we did this, we'd still take their crates. There's just, there's some dogs that get really crazy when they're in a strange area and if they're left by themselves. And I can't imagine that Disney is okay with, here, just leave your dog in our hotel room. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Things well, are going to get eaten and chewed, and there's all kinds of strange smells, and it's just, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm sh If you have a well-behaved dog, if you want to do this, if you can't stand to go somewhere without your dog, please feel free. But Yeah, I would like to know how you guys feel about this, because the feedback that we're getting has been very... Well, it's very negative. It actually has been. It's so. been very negative. And, and I, I was, was it Disney Parks Podcast put yeah, out a poll I think, and they asked. Yeah, I think Tony did that. Uh, last time I checked, which was around lunchtime today, he had 140 should not do this and about like 12, yes, we like this idea. Well, in, and here's the thing. I mean, I, I don't, I get it. You know, for some people, dogs are... Uh, you know, accessories. If you're if you're dealing with a little itty bitty Shih Tzu or a little miniature insert dog breed here, uh, I kind of get that. But the dogs are not allowed in the park legally. The dogs aren't allowed in the park just to have a dog in the park. Uh, if it's a service animal, that's a whole different ball game. Uh, and then the second thing is, uh, you are not allowed to leave your dog for more than seven hours. I don't know how Disney tracks that, but you're not allowed to. I, actually, I do know how they track it. Uh, you're not allowed to leave your dog for more than seven hours. And if your dog is being a noise nuisance, they will call you back to the resort. So that's, and, and what did that say? You had 30 minutes right. from the time they call you for you to get back to the hotel. So you can't, you can't rely on Disney transportation. Uh, you, you might not be able to do a Mickey, what do they call it? Minivan. A minivan. Uh, you may get an Uber. Why but, couldn't you do a minivan? Uh, because not all... Not all resorts are doing the minivans. Yeah, Correct. That's right. And then, and then the thing is, that pretty much guarantees you're either going to take a taxi or you're going to call an Uber. Unless you're driving, that's a whole different ballgame. That's the first thing. That's the first red flag for me. And I'm a dog owner and a dog lover. Absolutely. The, the second thing is, why would you bring your dog? I've not heard any valid argument for why you would bring your dog on vacation because they're not allowed into the park. They're not allowed to go with you anywhere other than outside and walk around. And it's not like Disney is really pet friendly. Like, Hey, it's let's go hang out with the cast members and the dogs. And all. It just seems really weird to me. Now there have been examples. So before anyone, you know, writes in and reminds us, there have been examples of service dogs that have been through the parks and it's gone very, very well. There is a beautiful video somewhere of, a, I think it was a golden retriever or a golden Labrador. I know. I'm so sorry. I get them confused. The long haired one it was a service dog meeting Pluto. 
Yeah. And Pluto got down on all fours, and the dog absolutely was just like, this is my hero. So excited. So cute. Definitely YouTube the video. Yeah, but that's not what we're talking about. We're right, talking about, I, you know. But we're saying, you know, not a dog-friendly place. Yeah. Under the right circumstances, they make those, you know, right. you're going to have those experiences. Right. And, and if you need a service animal, if you have a service animal, then everything that I said is is a moot point. It's like a cow's opinion. It's moot. It's moot. But the thing is, if you're just like, oh, I just can't leave little Fluffy by herself, and we got to take her along, why would you do that? If your dog is one of these little yippy dogs, like, you know, a certain dog that we own that you hear on, on videos a lot. Oh, he's not yippy. He's barky. You know, I would never put that, uh, put a guest in a situation where they have to deal with that. I just don't understand. So all that being said, if you have uh, a really good reason or a thought about it, Mm -hmm. You know, let us know what that is because I would I would love to know. I mean, yeah, it's great to have your dog there, but you can't, you know, they're stuck in the room. You know, it's almost as bad as being boarded. It's more expensive and you're really putting yourself in the liability. Mm -hmm. so God forbid something bad happened and, and there's an accident with your dog on either in either way. Yeah. It's just not something that that I, I think is a wise move. But that's just me. Uh, any, any last words? No. I mean, I think I'm, I'm looking up the video, so I'm actually going to, uh, so we can post it in the notes. So if you have any, you know, the cute video. Right. We always want to have a cute thing. All right. In keeping with the more controversial <laughs> topics this week, oh uh, Disney World has extended their 60-day advanced Fast Pass Plus booking to guests at select non-Disney hotels. Now, when we say non-Disney, uh, we don't necessarily mean uh, the the no tell motel down the road on 192. We, we don't mean the Holiday Inn or you know well, not even well okay we don't mean the Holiday Inn on 192. We don't even mean like what used to be the Nickelodeon. We don't mean those that are close and you right. can stay by. But we mean resorts that are technically on Disney property. Right. Basically, we're talking about the resorts on uh, Lake Buena Vista basically near Disney Springs. So, and we're also probably going to throw in the the Hilton, Hilton Bonnet Creek, the Waldorf Astoria, and the Wyndham. We're going to throw those in. We're probably. going to throw those in because we don't know. Right. We don't have the list yet. But, but Disney World Resort hotel guests and those staying at the Swan and Dolphin have traditionally been able to book their Fast Pass, Fast Pass Plus reservations 60 days prior to their visit. Now, it seems that Disney uh, will roll out the same benefit to multiple Walt Disney World good neighbor hotels, including those on Hotel Plaza Boulevard near Disney Springs. So that basically means uh, your Lake Buena Vista Hilton, the Palace, mm -hmm. uh, the which is uh, also a Hilton, right? The Hyatt, uh, maybe the B Resort, maybe the Holiday Inn, right there. So you've got a handful of. Uh, we don't know anything I'm about. I say there's a Sheridan there. Also. There is. We don't know anything about the Grand Cypress on the other side of, right. of of there. But but we know there's a handful of resorts on Lake Buena Vista that we're really looking at. So uh, the complete list has not been available, but we know these non Disney hotels will be able to offer their guests the 60 day Fast Pass Plus booking window mm -hmm. sometime before the end of 2017. Now these bookings will still be done through the My Disney Experience app, the same way that other resort guests make their advanced Fast Pass Plus reservations. But we expect every hotel in the Disney Springs Resort area and uh, on Hotel Plaza Boulevard to be included. So here's the thing. Um, well, now these are, and they're also including some additional good neighbor hotels. Right. So there are a handful of hotels in the area that are considered either on Disney property or adjacent enough to Disney property that they are, they get this Disney good neighbor seal. Right. And there's things like, you know, you can almost tell what those are because when you go into the hotel rooms, you can find Stacy. So I'm, I'm actually, and I know as a fact that the two Hiltons that we talked about, the Buena Vista Palace and the um, Lake, Lake Buena Vista, um, they are part of this. Right. Because I do work in the area and I hear things. So. <clears throat> right. But that doesn't mean that all good neighbor hotels are getting this because all the right. hotels up 192 get 60. True. And, but it did say additional good neighbor hotels. Right. So we don't know. They so, have definitely said those right around Disney Springs. Right. But then there'll be additional. So mm -hmm. when do you, where do you think those will be? I uh, the 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 Bonnet Creek, the Bonnet Creek Wyndham, the Bonnet Creek Waldorf Astoria. Think the World Center. 
uh, maybe. It's a big Marriott right yeah. there by Disney Springs. So anyway, the the thing is, that this is causing a little bit of a controversy because, you know, annual pass holders get to do their fast passes um, early. Uh, no, uh, if you're if you book rooms and you're a pass holder, you get the 30 day window. But, you know, we don't get the same luxury as that. So the problem is, is a lot of people who are booking the, the premium, we're calling it premium, uh, Disney vacation packages are mad now because they're competing with the 60 day out people who are not spending all the money to stay in a Disney resort. Now they're having to compete with other people who are coming to Walt Disney World for those coveted fast passes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, we talked about it a lot yesterday. I, I struggle. I think that a lot of people are making this, you know, coming to Walt Disney World shouldn't be just about the rides. And it's just, it seems to only be about, well, I got to get those fast passes. What if you don't? Well, I don't think they're making it just about the rides, but I think the struggle has been that, and, you know, I had this conversation with a client recently that they, you know, they want to come down here and they want to experience Disney because they want to know if they want to bring the rest of their company down. And, you know, they go over to Animal Kingdom for what's supposed to be a few hours. They want to check out Pandora real quick. And it's a two and a half hour wait. Yeah. So I don't think it's just about the rides, but the nice thing about the fast passes is if you have that ability to plan ahead, then you can get those passes so you're not spending all of your time in line for a ride. Sure. That's the last thing you want to do on your vacation. Sure. But if, if, if you're somebody who's looking to, to book a major corporate event at Disney, mm -hmm. there should be a, a, a line of communication that you could go down to say, look, you know, I'm looking to book uh, some rooms here for a major conference and you can probably reach out to Disney and they can probably find a way to get fast passes to you. Not if you're at a, not at a Disney resort. Well, therein lies the problem. So right. for some of those partner hotels, I will tell you that if you're coming with um, groups, it has to be like the group rate. So if you're a conference meeting, et cetera, there are special passes available. So there's, you know, we have the, what is it? After, after four pass, after six pass, something like that. Well, now they have two or three other versions of that, that, you know, the after three, the after four, the after seven, um, different things that the cost goes down. So if you have to go to meetings all day, and then you can get your pass and you go over to the parks, you know, that right. is a great option. So. Right. Well, who knows? And then uh, you had a note in here about extra magic hours. Well, that is something else that some <coughs> of these hotels offer at certain times of the year. Right. So Probably not the busy times of year. Well, and that's what I don't know because, you know, uh, one of the hotels that I frequent, again, I work in the York. Uh, I work in the industry, I work in the area, and so one of the hotels walking through heard that they were actually doing the extra magic hours for the next time's coming up, and someone else made that exact same statement. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, but they won't do it when it's busy. Have you ever been to Disney during Food and Wine Festival, during the holidays, two weeks of Christmas? All, I mean, it's crazy. Day after Thanksgiving, it's almost worse than Black Friday shopping. Almost. So, right. so it does happen. So, speaking of the holidays, the filming schedules have been released for the upcoming ABC holiday specials that they film at Walt Disney World. The latest filming schedule for this is Friday, November 3rd, they will be at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Saturday, November 4th, they will be at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Sunday, November 5th, Monday, November 6th, and Tuesday, November 7th, they will all be at Magic Kingdom. Mm. So... As always, schedules are subject to change. Things might happen with the weather, this or that. We don't know. So, But following from last year's format, there will be multiple shows set to air throughout the holiday season in November and December, and the airing dates are still to be announced. <clears throat> like last year, the parade will be um, no parade will be filmed at Walt Disney World, but stage show performances, including musical acts, will be filmed here in Florida. Mm -hmm. The parade will be filmed at Disneyland in California. Mm -hmm. Uh, tickets will not be made available to guests with cast members filling in the audience as extras. It may be possible to see parts of the filming from guest areas. So if you're a cast member, great time to, you know, if you have a day off, great time to go. Definitely wear your most Christmas friendly gear because that always gets you on the, um, on the camera. We've seen our friends. We yeah. know them. I don't, I don't think the cast members are going to be the problem. I think that it's, you know, it's the guest reaction to this. What so, do you mean? Not being used. Guess, guests, guests have never been used. Guests are not being used for this at all. Guests have never been used. This is nothing new. I think the biggest thing about this announcement is these are the days that as guests, 
We don't go to those parks. Yeah, avoid those parks at all costs. Don't go to Hollywood Studios on Friday, November 3rd. Don't go to Animal Kingdom on Saturday, November 4th. And if you have anywhere else you can go, maybe Magic Kingdom is not the place for you on the 5th, 6th, and 7th of November. Right. Just and the, saying. And the other thing, it, you know, to make sure that we're being very, very clear, understand that we love you, we care about you, and we definitely want you to come visit Walt Disney World. But there is no Christmas Day parade uh, for TV on that day. Is there, is there a parade on Christmas? Yes. Is it the parade that you watch on ABC television? Uh, no. So you're not going to get like, you know, Justin Bieber and the kids from Descendants 2 and, you know, some B grade star singing on top of, uh, you know, buildings in, you know, you know, whatever country act they put in the four court stage. That's not going to happen on Christmas day. So it's going to no. be a regular operating day. All of that stuff wait, wait, has already it's been not filmed. Be regular. It's going to be busy. Yeah. Very, very busy. That is true. There is a tradition here in Orlando that lots of people get up in the morning and they have their coffee and their cocoa and maybe their um, eggnog and they open gifts and everyone loves on each other and somebody makes breakfast and then they all go to the parks. God love you. I, I mean, I love the parks as much as the next Disney fan, but... No, it's we, a lot of people. There are days I mean, it's we a don't. Lot of, it's a lot of people. We just we it's, know it's, it's that we don't people. have to go on the crazy busy days. Right. We don't have to go when it's 112 degrees outside because we paid for these five days. Right, right, right. So right. we love the parks, but we're not going to kill ourselves. That is true. We did New Year's once. Once. Uh, all right. It, it was actually probably the day we did the least in the parks. All the lines were two or three hours at least. I mean, for even even the poopy rides. I mean, it was the, a two-hour the poopy rides. I don't don't go down the list. We'll offend someone. I'm sure we will. We'll talk I, okay, about I'm it later. sorry. I didn't mean poopy rides. For the rides that are less popular than others, it was still a two to three hour <coughs> wait for you to go through a queue and go into a ride that you watch some sort of movie and something may or may not happen, or to get on a little moving car of some sort that's shaped like something that's not a car and ride through air or water or a track. And you know those rides, those rides that you go and say, everything else is three hours, but this is 40 minutes. I'm gonna go ride that. Nope. Yeah, no. We it's, nap. It's a three hour wait just to, to see Mickey's Philhar Magic and as great as that attraction is, it's we do love it's crazy. All right, so last and certainly not least. I am so going to get in trouble for that, aren't I? Probably. I didn't mean poopy, but you know what I mean? All your cards and letters can be sent to Tony at DisneyByTheNumbers.com. Um, He's going to kill me. <laughs> we've got uh, a big movie coming up. Actually, uh, next week, we've been very blessed. We've been invited to go see a screening for uh, Thor Ragnarok. Very excited. So that'll be fun. We're going to be on Monday. So. Or we're going to do that on Monday, so when we come together on Tuesday, Monday? yeah, we're going next Monday. I thought, you know what? These are always Tuesday, so I was just totally. Ooh. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Monday. All right. Pretty sure it's Monday. I'll we'll go let back you know and check Tuesday. the list. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Monday because isn't Tuesday Halloween? Stand by, please talk. Next Tuesday is Halloween. It's the 31st, right? Just all right. So, anyway. Uh, the other movie that I'm very excited for is Star Wars The Last Jedi, and that's coming out. Yes, and next Tuesday is Halloween. Ooh, right. we should dress up. Yeah, we're going to do a special show on Halloween that night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so we have uh, a new addition coming to Star Tours in Disneyland and here in Walt Disney World at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, Disney's just announced that the new mission is coming to Star Tours uh, the New Adventure is inspired by the upcoming film Star Wars The Last Jedi. This action sequence occurs on the planet of Crate, uh, which is featured in the film's teaser trailer. I'm assuming it's the, the desert-y looking planet where the ships are flying uh, really low and the, the red dust or dirt is just flying up. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, guess, but you're guessing. I'm guessing. All right. Guests visiting Disneyland and Hollywood Studios on November 17th will be able to enjoy the new sequence's debut. Internationally, uh, the sequence will debut at Disneyland Paris on November 2nd and in Tokyo Disneyland on December 15th. I'm kind of excited. I, there's a piece of me that's actually thinking about going over to uh, to Star Tours on the 17th and going to ride the ride. And what is the 17th? I don't know what day it is. I, uh, I barely know what day uh, Halloween is. but. So that's well, exciting. you also thought today was yesterday. I did. I've been doing, it's a long story. My oh, Mondays it's a are, Friday. It's a, uh, 
So anyway, yeah. um, I'm excited about this. You're excited about this? Uh, I'm excited about this, but you know, there's just, I'm trying not to get too excited, but I'm sure as we get closer, it will be great. I, I just feel like every time we ride Star Tours, we get the exact same mission. Well, one of the things that they did last year or two years ago when The Force Awakens started is they, they did the same thing. They premiered the new destination uh, at Jakku, and we were like, what is this Jakku stuff? And, it, you know, we didn't realize how cool it was going to be, and it actually was a pretty cool experience. And what they did during the premiere is they ran that you were guaranteed Jakku, and then it was another adventure. Uh, so we got to see Jakku and then whatever else. So I'm kind of hoping they do the same thing here. It would really uh, not go well with me if I stood in line for three hours waiting to see to see the new land, or the new experience, and I get uh, Hoth and uh, what is it? We always got we always got Hoth and we always got the uh, pod racing scene. Oh, my God. oh, shoot me in the head for the pod racing scene. Anyway, well, and I'm just hoping that if it is the sand dust planet, yeah. that it's not because it, that's kind of what the pod racing scene is. Uh, yeah. So I'm hoping it's not the exact same thing. Yeah. So come on, so, Disney, you have time. Make right. it cool. You have a few more days. Uh, so very excited about that. I, I hope you guys are excited about it. Let us know in the comments uh, what you're most excited about coming up for the holiday season. All right. So, um, so what? This is what we want to hear from you. More, we want to hear about how do you feel about dogs in the hotels? Yep. So would you bring your own? What would you do if somebody started barking next to you? All that fun stuff. <laughs> and we know there's probably a lot of people have allergies. Yeah. That's a big deal, too. We didn't talk about the so, allergies. But, our, yeah, our understanding has been that there will be specific dog-friendly rooms. So. Good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, how do you feel about Disney extending the fast passes and the extra magic hours to the additional hotels that are not on Disney property? Right. Would you go to a filming day just to see if you might be able to see something? Or would you stay far, far away? And finally, are you excited about the new Star Tours mission? Options. You, options. There are options. It'd be nice if you could pick. Like, oh, if yeah. you could go Jeez. in, and as you go by, there's like a touch screen, and everybody gets a vote, and then whatever gets the most votes, that's what you. That's what that car sees. God help the nerds in the audience. Oh. <laughs> All right, so, anything else for this week? I don't think so. I mean, we, we have our cocktails and coffee cups. So we do. Oh, we wait. Even went, there we go. We went kind of apple and honey flavored, so it's a little... It's a little different. Well, I was going to say it's a little towards fall. Yeah. It's our, it's our nod towards fall. I mean, it's still 80 degrees here. We yep. are. We're getting a cold snap. Ooh. It's supposed to be in the 50s by tomorrow night. Yeah, I don't believe it that. It might hit 49 later in the week. So what you're saying is we're not going to be able to go swimming. Yeah, our pool isn't heated. <laughs> Y'all know where to get a pool heater. Let me know. All right, guys. We appreciate you guys taking so much of your time to watch and share and be a part of this. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. If you really like what you saw, share this video with other friends. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you click the subscribe button and hit the little bell so that you get notifications whenever we have new videos coming out. So thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Thank Come visit you. us at www.parkhoppers.com. Uh, join us next week. We might be doing some ghost stories, Disney ghost Ooh. stories. That's kind of my thought. I think that'll be fun. Well, so, maybe maybe some news, but definitely some ghost stories. Absolutely. Right. So, WW Park Hoppers. Four parks, one world. And everything in between. Good night, everybody. See Cheers. you next week.